BBC Tees with me, Bob Fisher. We're on 95FM, DAB and online, bbc.co.uk slash tees. Uh, Teesside film director Craig Hornby has just finished his new feature. Uh, it's a documentary about legendary Middlesbrough-born singer-songwriter Vin Garbutt, uh, running at Cineworld in Middlesbrough until Thursday the 18th of November. Pleasure to say that Craig and Vin joined me in the studio. Hello, gents. Yeah. Hey, yeah. How's, you doing, how's yeah. life? Yeah, you both in good shape? Yeah. Oh, I'm beat, oh, exhausted, the band of it, yeah. As, I, I suspect it's something of a busy week for the pair of you. Absolutely. I've had like I had four hours kept last night. I had no, hour, no sleep the night before that, and it's been very intermittent. But uh, adrenaline, it's a marvellous thing, adrenaline, if you could only buy it in the shops. <laughs> <laughs> Be honest, when did you finish the film? I finished the film, um, I finished it yesterday, tea day, right? <laughs> and I, was, I, I got it off the computer and it was in my hand, you know, I was like, wow, this is amazing. I was so relieved because I'd had a few computer shenanigans, right. right, and it wasn't playing ball at all. And, I let, and after an hour I went, I'm going to make an even better version. And I tweaked it till 4am this morning <laughs> and it spat out another brand new master. So Nothing like go. cutting it a bit fine, the is final, it? final, final, final cut. Hey, he's an artist, see, he wakes up in the middle of the night and goes, oh, cut another three seconds and I'd make it better. That. <laughs> get rid of this, get rid of that, and this little three seconds and yeah. do a link for it. It's a discipline. If, if it's a discipline, it's for obsessive perfectionists. You can't you can't do otherwise. I just can't, don't believe it can be done at all. You know? No, it's a good thing. You've got to take these things seriously, haven't yeah. you? But when you well, spread it, when it, when it takes over your life and spreads to other elements of your life, yeah. you know, that's when it gets problematic <laughs> for everybody else around you, you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> there's, a, there's a deep, dark secret here you're about to move on I to. Can't there, but I can't what, put the butter on this it. slice of toast unless <laughs> every corner is equally spread with margarine, you know what I mean? Yeah, and with this being radio, the, the listeners can't tell that you've rushed out without getting dressed. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> That's why it's Naked Friday. It's fine, we do this every week. Um, how did this start then, Craig? Um, I'm guessing Vin was somebody that you'd admired for, for some time. Well, actually, no, believe it or not. Um, oh, I, saw, I thought you were about to sing his praises. No, 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 he said I was shy 20 years ago. <laughs> didn't, I didn't say shy. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> um, yeah, I've known about him all my life because yeah. we went, I went to the same school as him. Right. When I was in first year, he was in 21st year. This is a bit older <laughs> than me. Yeah. And St. Peter's in South Bank. So he was always well known. Wilf Manning and Vin Garb yeah. were like the most illustrious ex pupils. <laughs> uh, really, that was how it was, you know. And, um, and uh, he made a record in 1970. Eight called Eston, California, and it was on the front cover of these of that album. A lot of my schoolmates is sitting in the gutter with Penny Whistles and him laughing his head off behind them, <laughs> and that was like really inspiring to me as a twelve-year-old. Yeah. I went, I've never seen our area presented in such a sort of um, a, way, a dignified and respectful and uh, impressive kind of way. You know, almost made in industrial tea had kind of glamorous. Mm. It's like wow, it's famous. You know, this this is amazing. A record about from round here, and. It stuck with me that. So when I got into making films, like um, in the late 80s, uh, it was a similar kind of thing I was picking up on because you, you rarely ever saw this area on the in the media, on the TV and stuff. So mm. in those days, before camcorders and before like you know computer edit and everything else. Mm. Um, and then I made Century in Stone in 2004, and uh, we discovered we had a mutual friend. He took me to see Vin, and he brought Vin to see my film, and. Uh, and I, I went to see him in Loftus Station and I was knocked out because um, it wasn't just... I'm not a big folk fan particularly, but um, the, 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 the relevance and the social commentary was very powerful and the humour was amazing. Hmm. And I was knocked out because he's been doing it for a thousand years and yet it was <laughs> like he was just brand new and fresh as a daisy and just the, the passion and all that really, the commitment, it's extraordinary, I think. And I was like, this is another important Teesside story that needs to be told. Like the Eston Minor story was, mm. it had never been heard by the people. And I wanted to, I thought, people across Teesside should get into this because they could, they'll relate to it in a massive way. But they would never, you know, go to a folk concert particularly. Well, I'm hoping the DVD is going to break down that barrier, you see. So what, what did you feel, Vin, when he came to you and said, I want to make a film about you? Was, was there a part of you that thought, no, I'm not up for this? Uh, well, all a bit scary. And f for one thing, just financially, I thought... Well, who's going to want to watch a documentary about me? You know, it says, television, are unlikely to buy it because um, I live on Teesside. If I lived in London or Newcastle, it might be in the local paper and they'd read about it and mm. they'd call me into the studio. But Teesside, we're a little bit, uh, we're a little bit forgotten for when it comes to television. So, uh, so that was a worry. And I thought, oh, oh, where's, where's my market? I know there's, a, the, there's thousands of folk clubs worldwide where mm. I can text them and sell them. But uh, he, he convinced me that there'll be 
Loads of people. I've got more Teesiders coming to see me in other parts of the world than they are on Teesside. Do you? Because you two are all over the world. Do you find them coming out in, you know, I, 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 Australia I, I, and yeah, Malaysia and, and people like that? And not just Teesiders. I'm, I'm sort of a... Because I'm from the North East, mm. but I'm a bona fide Geordie to sort of the... Yeah. The the emigre Geordies and Mackhams of the world. Yeah, yeah. Perth in Australia, it's nearly all northeastern accents. Every little variation from Warren, Warren Bay to Seaham. I took Century in Stone to Perth in 2005, right? Mm. Got on ABC Australia Radio. Drag time show. The phones went ballistic. We sold the place out. Loads of people came to see the film. Loads of infants. Loads of Geordies saying... Uh, Great, great to see you, son. Someone local with a local film. <laughs> it's like, it's like, it's simple as that, but we, we weren't in the most isolated city yeah. on the planet at that particular point. But it's all good, and I toured with Vin. 80 months later, I'm back over there following him on tour. We went across Australia, went to Malaysia, we went to Holland, Belgium, ended up in Canada. You know, all these places, he's got this following all over the world, mm. and he just does his same act that he does here, pretty much. And it's amazing, the reaction, and the, uh, this worldwide affection for him is quite it's astounding really I Wait, mean. was it a strange experience Vin having this fella following you around all over the world and filming you wherever well, you go well it is I mean and he can't be set up Tishy's can he's six foot seven and he's vegetarian and he gets he gets hyper if he hasn't eaten he can't get a word in edge with it if he's hungry <laughs> if he's hungry <laughs> if he's hungry <laughs> he needs feeding and then he'll calm oh. down a bit <laughs> I've never noticed that happening hey, and another thing I got to, I got to Kuala Lumpur a week before he did he was coming to join us and film us yeah. and I got there first and I knew he was vegetarian I thought I'll check out all the veggie food tons of it so many cultures you know yeah. and I found tons and tons of fantastic veggie food and when he got there I said found all you, you're not going to starve here Craig and I took him and he's going, ooh, don't like the look of that. Ooh, don't like the look of that. <laughs> you know, anyway, I realised, I mean, there's a lot of T-siders are meeting two veg people. Yeah, yeah. You know, meeting two veg are happy with it. And I found, I realised that Craig Armby is a veg and two veg man. <laughs> <laughs> you know, he's a suitcase full of baked beans with him, oh, didn't he? Oh, yeah, he did, yeah. He took some corn bakers over. Made him so sleep, yeah. Indeed, yeah. So um, what, what sort of form does the film take, then? Is it is it a travelogue of you on tour? Or is it a history of your 40-odd years singing he, and songwriting? He or is, is it? Okay. Well, it's, it's a bit of both. Um, it's, it's it's a biographical documentary mm. tracing his life, his career, right from his 40 years on the road and uh, his early early days in South Bank right the way through, intercut with many tangents to different parts of the world. You mm. know, we go from like he's talking about his dad having an allotment in South Bank while he's perched on the cliff at Hummersy near Loftus, and in the next it cuts to the next bit, um, and we're in an Indian reservation in Canada. And then we cut to the next bit. We're outside a, a Hindu uh, temple. It, Hindu temple in sort of Kuala Lumpur. Yeah, and that's his world. That's it. He's always like it's an intensely local story mm. and epically global at the same time. And that's what I love about that. He's like he's he's in, you know he's in tune. He knows about this, this area, but he's got his global and his scope. I've brought it home so people he can find out what happens when he goes on the road, you know. Haven't you found some really early footage as well? Yeah. 1966? 1966, yes. Yeah. 15 second clip. Right. It was, uh, it was filmed on an old cine film and above a shop in South Bank at a private party, you know, in the middle of the night. Where'd right? you find it? Yeah. Pinch and thuff. <laughs> <laughs> who had it? Did somebody get in touch with you and say, I've got this? who filmed it. Yeah. And he got in touch and gave He told me ages ago, and I yeah. lost him, say, I lost this fella, and I got, oh, God, I had, his, I had his phone number and everything. Couldn't find it. He ended up putting little little bits in local papers and things. And then, with the, what did you call him? Well, Mosum Man. Mosum that was the last place I saw him. Right. Would Mosum Man make himself known? We want this clip. Anyway, if it time goes. was running out, and all of a sudden he played in Mosum a year after the gig, like right. about six weeks ago, a month ago. And I went along and we did it over the mic as Mosum Man in the crowd, and uh, <laughs> his friend was. So, how old were you in 66, Finn? I was 19. Were you? Yeah. yeah. Do you remember the party? Uh, I, I remember being picked up to go to it. But I, I can't remember. <laughs> you can't remember getting back from it. <laughs> oh, that's it yeah. Sex, drugs and folk music. Yeah. Can, you say, can you say that on the radio? Yeah, I'm sure. All right. Yeah, <laughs> Not yeah. folk music. No, you can't yeah. say that. So really, this is a folkumentary. You know what I mean? Oh, good. Hey.
<laughs> well, look, it's on um, uh, Cine World all uh, next week, isn't it? Until yeah, yeah. until Friday through to Thursday, like full cinema week. It's on twice a day at two thirty and seven thirty, and it's six pounds. That's one pound thirty discount, right? And uh, and four pound concessions. Fantastic. Uh, and yeah. Any plans after that? Because I know you took Century and Stone on tour with you for. I mean, you went everywhere with it, yeah, didn't you? Yeah. Took it all over. Um, the the plan with this, the plan with this is to uh, to get it in sort of like places like Stockton Ark, yeah. Dalek Nart Centre, if it stays open, you know. Well, yeah. Threatened to Sadly, worry, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And maybe in Townside Cinema, Side Gallery Cinema up in Newcastle. Why not? You know. Um, Fantastic. We'll just get it out there and. Um, stop banging on the table. Sorry, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, is it really? Oh, yeah. Sorry, mate. Sorry, mate. Yeah. Well, look, good luck with it. I can't wait to see it. Um, what's what's next for you, Vin? Are you kind of like continuing to tour all over the place? Well, yeah. This is. I mean, every every minute he's 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 filled in every minute and phone up and say, Vin, I need thirty seconds or ten seconds. That thirty seconds or ten seconds. It took five hours up top of heads and numbers. I'm off to Australia for a festival at Christmas. Fantastic stuff, Greg. Lovely to see you as always. Yeah. Good luck with the film, awesome, uh, Vin. Lovely to see you as always. Good luck with the film and, and Australia and everything else that yeah, you're doing. Yeah, yeah. And uh, yeah. Uh, the films uh, at uh, Cineworld World in Middlesbrough yeah. from the 12th the 18th of November. Yeah. Brilliant stuff. Craig Hornby, Vin Garbutt here on BBC Tees with me, Bob Fisher, 95FM, DAB, online, bbc.co.uk slash tees. My grandfather came to tell you the news that I was on my way. You offered to use your power to abuse and throw his grandchild away. 